Ah, Should have warmed up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to, am I recording on there? Yes, I am. I am recording uh, uh, screenshots uh, because the events in Afghanistan are, they're what's in the news right now. And they're absolutely enthralling to me just uh, after 20 years of occupation the United States has moved out of Afghanistan or is evacuating ASAP. Uh, first of all, my heart goes out to those who are in Afghanistan who are in desperate times fearing an incursion uh, by the Taliban as a government. Uh, there's been scenes of you know people on the tarmac at the airport surrounding uh, a military airlift vehicle, uh, some of them taking refuge on the side of the plane as kind of the uh, doors to the wheel compartments come out. They were sitting up there and then they fly up. And then the, as those collapse, they fall off the plane and, and ended up killing themselves. That happened two days ago. So it's a very, very dire situation. But before I, get, before I begin, I want to go ahead and talk about some of the geography we're talking here because it occurs to me these people have so many options of country, other countries that they could go to, yet there is a desire to come to the United States. It's far away. So as we zoom in to Afghanistan, let's just go around here. They share a border with Pakistan. They share a border with Iran. Oh, there you see, Iran. And then Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan to the north. And interestingly enough, what's this border over here? You see, yeah, it does... Touch it. Uh, Chin Chang. Well, let's uh, go in a little closer. What's this? So as you can see, Chin Chang, China. So yes, it does share a very small border with China, which is really interesting, which is really interesting because their recent track record in this specific area of Xin Jiang, trying to pronounce that correctly, uh, has not been optimal. In fact, if we just go ahead and do a little uh, do a little Google search of Xinjiang, got to load, and we go to news, there is some concern. Why? Because they have been forcibly uh, jailing, they have been forcibly jailing uh, ethnic minority Uyghurs who are Muslim in that country. And we're not talking being night. We're not talking about just going into jail and you know segregating them. We're talking about uh, you know sitting in a chair for three days. We're talking about forced abortions. We're talking about rape. We're talking about beating people. And uh, this has been documented on Frontline, excellent news source, as well as uh, some of the headlines. So I encourage you, uh, yes, do your own research on Xinjiang. You're going to find out that. It's uh, it's not a really good situation what China has been doing to their Muslim population. And that's certainly a point of concern, considering that the Taliban is a fundamentalist government. Now, with that in mind, it brings another question. Why are people wanting to leave? Why are Afghans wanting to leave their country just because another regime has entered? And let's look at some headlines of things. This is rawa.org. And notice the date for uh, American occupation, November 17th, 1999. Uh, Kabul, Afghanistan. Thousands of people watched as a woman cowering beneath a pale, all blue, enveloping burqa was shot and killed in the first public execution in Kabul since the re Taliban religious army took control three years ago. So, you know, there's you don't need to really worry about kneeling uh, during a national anthem if if people are getting killed for infractions. And you can see they're not pulling any punches. You know what happened next. And you see the condemned over here and it just it's uh, and the body laying right there. Yeah, it's uh, this is what people are fleeing from. Uh, and in case, just in case, you thought uh, it was an isolated incident, we have July, July 22nd, 2002, thousands of specters pleaded uh, Friday to spare the life of a convicted killer, but then watched the brother of one of his victims get his throat cut in the first public 
execution. Now, my pronunciation of this may be wrong. I believe it's a quasas or quasas, something like that. Now, I'm going to stand back. Now, the idea is uh, in our minds, like a throat getting cut, it's like just one slit and, you know, you're good to go. But in videos, you can see of what happened in Afghanistan, obviously not going to show it. When they go to do that, they don't stop with a slit. They keep going, they keep going, they keep going, and then the head comes off and the body lays down. So it's a beheading. And uh, yeah, that's some concern when you make an infraction against the government. That's why people are running and risking their lives on airplanes. And in case you're thinking that, you know what, this that was the Taliban then, because of course we're seeing various uh, uh, news report that this is a new Taliban. They've kind of changed their tunes. They want to, uh, uh, within Islamic law, they want to advocate women's rights and speak up for that. But that being said, look at this other headline that is from July 29th of this year. Taliban admits it killed Afghan comedian after video showing capture and murder going viable. So this guy basically poked fun at this religious government and they whacked him and uh, made a video out of it. And it's out there somewhere. I haven't seen it, don't wanna see it. I've been comedy myself and just knowing my material could get me killed. To me, that's oppression. To me, that's fascism. And it's interesting because we were throwing those words around. Uh, here we were throwing those around last year in this country as we were mounting protests. Uh, you know, we had groups like Antifa saying we're oppressed. Uh, there's fascism in this country, and of course, that's what Antifa stands for, right? Anti-fascist. So it's interesting that when there are people getting killed and women's rights are being restricted, and let's not go into LGBTQ rights. Yeah, it's it's equally bad. I'm just waiting to see that video of all those protesters on planes, immediately Afghan bound and just standing in solidarity with the people of Afghanistan who do not want a religious government. What I'm getting at here is I hope that Americans can take a real introspection as to our rights to due process, uh, the freedom of speech, the freedom of the press, freedom to fr uh, assemble and get angry and be able to voice our concerns and our grievances, Not certainly not a perfect country, but one where we can enact change and we can make that change palpable. Uh, as demonstrated by the articles we've just seen, you can't do that under other governments and it doesn't necessarily need to be the Taliban. Right next door in China, yeah, they have a 99% conviction rate. And uh, if there's not a charge on the books, they can make one up and you're good to go. And they also do that thing where they put the gun to the back, somebody's back somebody's head and they, you know, they send them into Tomorrowland. So I, I guess it's a really big ask that we appreciate the freedoms that we have in this country and that a, another landlocked country uh, that has a, a couple choices of other countries they can visit they're electing to risk their lives to come to a country where others claim it's oppressive and it's fascist. That doesn't make sense. And it flies in the face of people who claim that this country is oppressive and fascist. I, I really can't take those claims seriously. So I guess it's a big ask on my part that we just, as Americans, we appreciate what we have. And um, yes, by all means, protest, by all means, make your grievances known. But Claiming oppression and claiming fascism in the face of real fascism, that just doesn't fly, with me anyway. Uh, and with that said, uh, I have one more uh, thing. When September 11th happened, I, I started, you know, I became uh, more interested in the news like I am now. I started listening to Sean Hannity. He was on a radio station back then. And uh, yeah, I, I know he's kind of polarized. He's kind of taken a different course, I don't really listen to him anymore. Uh, adversely, uh, I started watching videos of reporters in Afghanistan. We're talking boots of the ground. And I stumbled onto Clarissa Ward. And I have to give a shout out to her because uh, when she's, um, she's the point of contact for a lot of uh, news outlets 
And uh, when she uh, put the uh, coals to Pentagon press secretary John Kirby, I thought those were that was not biased in any means. I mean, she's really asking there. Why? Because people are asking her. It's on video. She's the one being accosted by Taliban uh, for being a woman and yet doing her job as a reporter. And even more so, she even took the time out to talk with Stephen Colbert and just kind of given a candid interview where she's um, reporting things as she sees them. So I don't know about a rant. This is simply my point of view, and I, I don't want to operate in a vacuum. Uh, if there's any points of contention or a different perspective or a comment, feel free to leave that. If you're going to be juvenile about something, uh, don't worry about it. I'm good. Don't got time for that. But I would love to engage in discourse as to um, the situation unfolding in Afghanistan and anything that I've discussed within this video. Once again, this is Eddie Wantland and uh, with the fake philosophers. Yeah, I gotta remember the name of the show. With the fake philosophers, we'll see you around.